Book of Omens, Irk Bitik, Divinations of the Uyghur Ancients, by D. W. Draffin. A clan of nomads stands at the crossroads in the desert, the horizon stretching away on all sides. Their seasonal migration has brought them here, as it does every year. But they have learned over time that some years it is better to take the eastern path in the spring to follow the herds of maral deer, and some years instead they find bison in the shallows of the river to the north. Which kind of year will this be? The shamans and the elders gather to discuss all the omens they have seen on the way here. The eagle in the morning was the sky god Tengri, watching over them. The ox had a rock in his hoof and had to be sacrificed. The west wind blows cold. All these portents are weighed, and then the shamans cast their knuckle bones. They confer, counting up the pips burned into the bones and reciting from memory the omens associated with that combination. The ceremony concluded, the shamans pronounce the divinations that are provided. This is a good year. The deer will be fat and lazy. To the east we must go. It is said that the Buddhist monk Yu Erzun first visited the Mogao Caves in Dunhuang nearly 2,000 years ago. There, at the edges of the Kumtag Desert, among the great red cliffs of Gansu, western China, he had a divine vision that someday the caves and grottos would be filled with a thousand Buddhas bathed in golden light. This, according to legend, is how the site became known as the Thousand Buddha Caves. Dunhuang is an oasis, a crossroads, and an important outpost on the Silk Road that connected east to west. The first man-made excavations and structures in Mogao date back to 366 CE. True to the monk's prophecy, the entire cave complex has indeed been filled with thousands of Buddhas, one of the marvels of the ancient world. In 1900, the Chinese Taoist abbot Wang Yuanlu explored the caves with the intent of restoring them. Instead, he discovered the library caves, interior chambers that had been walled off for unknown reasons in the 11th century CE. Aurel Stein, one of the Europeans who bought much of the material found in the library caves, removing thousands of manuscripts to the British Museum and scattering the collection among the capitals of Europe, said at the time, heaped up in layers, but without any order, there appeared in the dim light of the priest's little lamp a solid mass of manuscript bundles rising to a height of nearly ten feet and filling, as subsequent measurements showed, close on 500 cubic feet. The area left clear within the room was just sufficient for two people to stand in. There are few libraries of documents from the ancient world that rival the Library Caves collection of Mogao. Tens of thousands of documents record the daily details of government reports, as well as religious texts and court records from a long series of Chinese and Tibetan dynasties. In 1907, Aurel Stein and the Frenchman Paul Pelliot paid no more than 90 to 100 pounds each for thousands of scrolls. In China and elsewhere, they are considered thieves, one of the documents Stein took back to the British Museum is the Irk Bitig, the Turkic Book of Omens. It is the earliest discovered manuscript written in Old Turkic and provides a fascinating glimpse into Central Asia at the dawn of the Uyghur and Mongol ethnogenesis.
Written sometime during the 9th or 10th centuries, the manuscript is a little book of 58 sheets, folded and glued together, with writing on both sides. It opens from right to left, and the script is read from right to left as well. Regarding the text itself, well, this is where the academic disputes begin. Some say the Irkbitig is written in a Manichaean dialect of Old Turkic, which is corroborated by the unnamed author of the text writing from a Manichaean monastery in the Colophon at the end. Written on the fifteenth day of the second month of the year of the tiger, this young pious disciple of the Te Gun Tan monastery writes this book for our affectionate big brother, General Itachuk. Yet others contend that it is written in a standard Old Turkic grammar, much like the inscriptions found in nearby Orkhan Valley. Either way, it is almost certainly a copy of another manuscript, with lexical and orthographic errors consistent with other copied works, and it almost certainly predates historical documentation, being a religious and cultural guide to omens and divination that began during the age of oral tradition, except for the group of scholars who say that it contains inventive passages and unique signifiers which argue for it to be an entirely original work conceived and recorded by the author. Written in Chinese over the top of the beginning and end of the list of omens are Buddhist prayers added at some later date. Sixty-five omens are included in the book, they all follow the same form, a brief vignette or parable followed by the judgment that this omen is good or bad. For example, omen 50 reads, A rowan horse is driven until it is exhausted, and a bay horse run until it collapses and its saddle blanket is drenched with sweat. No, thus, the omen is very bad. Or omen 11 when a messenger arrives on a yellow horse and an envoy appears on a brown horse with good tidings, know thus, the omen is extremely good. Yet six of the omens possess no accompanying judgment at all, only the words, know thus, followed by a blank space. Above each omen is a series of circles in three sets, correlating to the dots on three prayer sticks. Three sticks were cast by priests in this formal, written version that developed centuries after our shamans at the crossroads in the desert. The Bitig book was consulted, the proper Irk, omen, found, and the divination was made. Several combinations of possible results do not appear among the sixty-five, and a few more are repeated. It is unknown whether these inconsistencies are more transcription errors or if the combinations were seen as irrelevant, or such bad luck they would not be included. To properly research and appreciate the subject of this episode, I went and bought myself a set of knuckle bones online. So, why knuckle bones? What is it, specifically, about these astragalus bones that make them the dice of choice for soothsayers? Astragaloi are often ankle bones of sheep or goats. The ones I found were deer. Their shape allows for them to fall on one of four sides with a roughly even chance and their use in claromancy, dice games, and astragalomancy has been documented back to over 5000 BCE. The word astragalus is Greek, from their own use of divination tables and knuckle bones, which dates back to at least the first century BCE. One of the earliest Sanskrit texts, known as the Bauer Manuscript, includes a similar process of divination which calls for three sticks, each marked one to four, and a list of 64 divinations to consult. Another of the earliest texts, the divination of Maheshvara, 
is the subject of the recent book Dice and Gods on the Silk Road. Its authors paint this picture. Suppose you live in Don Huang in the 10th century, and you have an important issue about which you need some advice, or perhaps an outsider's perspective. You visit a diviner and agree to his fee. He tells you to sit down and face west. The diviner then invokes the god's chakra, Brahma, and the four heavenly kings, as well as a host of other spirits as witnesses. He tells you to state your name, to focus your mind, and to profess a vow. Then he tells you to announce the issue that brought you here and gives you three odd rectangular dice. Among the Mongols, this practice is known as shagai, and these knuckle bones were cast as often for games of chance or displays of dexterity as they were for their oracular powers. Although often the ritual has many layers. This is an experience many of us have had ourselves. Games of chance are as popular as they have ever been, and those who play these games often attribute mystical powers to what are simple random number generators. Whether it's a craps player at a casino with their favorite dice, or a Dungeons and Dragons player rolling to save their character's life, the dice themselves can quickly gain supernatural powers in our eyes. I like to think it's because that when the stakes are high, we seek for any advantage, real or imagined. Athletes thank God for their competitive performances. Superstitions creep in. We wear the same lucky shirt. We eat the same breakfast before a big match. Also, we are, above all, pattern-seeking primates, who find meaning in nearly everything. By placing literally any structure between ourselves and reality, we are able to make new observations and draw conclusions that lead to deeper insights, regardless of whether they are correct or not. The shamans at the crossroads had no greater possible stakes than the survival of their clan for another season. Their astragalomancy was a decision of life and death, so they called on all powers seen and unseen to aid them, and this process would be refined by repetition. They would experiment with different systems in different settings thousands of times over generations. The plants and animals of their world the storms and celestial events, all had meaning that directly related to them. It must. They could not afford to ignore any message from manifold powers they considered greater than themselves. They rolled the bone. Here is my adaptation of the English translations that exist. The most accurate is generally considered to have been done in 1994 by Talat Tekin and may be found in his book Irkpitig, The Book of Omens. Please consult it for a more exact but perhaps less accessible version. Finally, why did I choose to study the Irkpitig in the first place and present it in its own episode? because it is beautiful. Irk Bittig One. I am the son of heaven, Ten Si, the emperor of China. In the morning and in the evening, I enjoy sitting on my golden throne. Know thus, the omen is good. 2. I am the god of the road. Find me in the morning or the evening as I amble along on my dappled horse. Two laughing travelers met me and fell silent, afraid, but I told them, Do not fear, I will bless your journey. Know thus, the omen is good. 3. I am an eagle of the sea with golden wings. Young am I, with juvenile feathers. There is nothing I cannot catch and eat. No one is more powerful than that. Know thus, 
the omen is good. 4. I am a falcon with white spots perched happily in the branches of a sandalwood tree. Know thus. 5. A Beck chieftain discovered that one of his white mares was about to foal. The Beck declared that it would grow to be a stallion with golden hooves. Then he discovered that a white camel cow was about to give birth to a calf. He declared that it would be a bull fit to wear a golden nose peg. In his house, the Beck's third princess was about to give birth to a son. The Beck declared that this child would himself become a Beck. By this, we know that this Beck was a happy man. Know thus, the omen is extremely good. 6. In a mountain pass, a bear crossed a boar, and they fought. The bear's belly was torn open, and the boar's tusks were broken off. Know thus, the omen is very bad. 7. A man arrives in a hurry with good tidings. Know thus, the omen is good. 8. I am a snake with a golden head. Cut my golden belly open and pull my head out, like pulling my body from the hole where I live. Know thus, the omen is bad. 9. A large house burned down. The walls burned to the floors and the floors burned to the corners. Know thus, the omen is bad. 10. I am a leopard yawning in the reeds. My bravery and skill are proven. Know thus. 11. When a messenger arrives on a yellow horse and an envoy appears on a brown horse with good tidings, know thus. The omen is extremely good. 12. A hunter fell to the ground, saying, in heaven God is mighty. Know thus, the omen is bad. 13. A camp was deserted except for a faithful crone, who kept herself from starving by licking the grease from a ladle. Know thus. 14. They tied a raven to a tree, calling out, Tie it tight so it may not escape. Know thus. 15. The fog in the sky above mixed with the dust along the ground, causing young birds to lose their way in flight, young deer to lose their way as they ran, and young children to lose their way as they walked. But, by the grace of heaven, they all met in the third year and rejoiced. Know thus, the omen is good. 16. Far from home, a starving horse fatted itself in a pasture. On its return, it was caught by a thief who leapt onto its back. But the horse was now so fat it could not escape him, nor hardly move. Know thus, the omen is bad. 17. A horse favored by the gods nearly died in the desert, exhausted, its life fading. Yet, drawing on the strength heaven granted it, the horse saw a path to the water in the mountains that led to a meadow of green grass. The horse drank the water, the horse ate the grass, and the horse did not die. Know thus, the omen is good. 18. Within the tent's own frame, how is it? How is the tent's smoke hole and its window? They can be seen through. How is the roof? It is strong. How are its ropes? They have all been counted. Know thus, the omen is very good. 19. A white horse chased its enemy across three worlds. 
With this prayer it struck the enemy dumb. Fear not, pray well, do not be afraid and speak of what you need. Know thus, the omen is good. 20. I am a camel bull with my own herd of cows. My white froth rises to the clouds and drains into the earth. My hoofbeats rouse the sleeping and bring them to their feet. That strong am I. Know thus, the omen is good. 21. An old hoopoo bird sang in the dawn of the new year. Remain calm. Don't look at it. Don't frighten it away. Know thus. 22. A woman dropped her mirror in the lake. So upset she mutters to herself day and night. Know thus. The omen is distressing and very bad. 23. A boy finds the dung of an eagle Blessing it, he cries, Lark, may God grant you favor. Know thus, the omen is good. 24. A blind foal searches a stallion for an udder. All it knows is that it lost the udder at midday, and it has not found it by midnight. Know thus, the omen is bad. 25. A man harnessed his two oxen to his wooden plow. They only stood there, stuck in place. Know thus, the omen is bad. 26. A new day dawned and the land grew bright. The sun rose in the sky and stretched its light across the world. Know thus, the omen is good. 27. A wealthy man's sheep startled and bolted from its flock. A wolf found it. But before it could catch the sheep, the wolf's mouth filled with poison. The sheep escaped to safety. Know thus, the omen is good. 28. One of the first things the newly crowned Khan decreed was the construction of a royal camp. His realm was secure. Good and wise men from every corner of the world were drawn to his court and adorned it. Know thus, the omen is good. 29. A butcher took a job to sustain his women and sons. In danger of losing his family, he returned instead from the slaughterhouse with ninety sheep, and the whole family rejoiced. Know thus, the omen is good. 30. The son of a poor man sets out on a journey to earn money. He returns a success, rejoicing and happy. Know thus, the omen is good. 31. A tiger went out on a hunt. It found the game trail. It found its prey. Know thus, the omen is good. 32. One spirea bush grew to a hundred. A hundred spirea grew to a thousand, and a thousand grew to ten thousand. Know thus, the omen is good. 33. A man put the woolen felt into water. Beat it soundly and tie it tight. Know thus, the omen is bad. 34. A Khan ended his campaign by routing his foe. On the return home, he declared that his soldiers could wander as nomads throughout his kingdom. They returned to camp with a song of rejoicing. Know thus, the omen is good. 35. A soldier went away to war. On his return, his horse faltered, exhausted. A swan appeared and offered the man a ride, bringing him safely back to his mother and father. Know thus, 
The omen is good. 36. You do not know the joy of bearing many titles, and you are unconcerned with a poor reputation. Therefore, nobody flies flags in your honor. Know thus, the omen is very bad. 37. An ox grew so old that ants began to eat it before it died, chewing at its belly while it could not move. Know thus, the omen is bad. 38. A slave girl was lost in the reeds. Heaven disapproved, lifting her up to become a queen. Know thus, the omen is good. 39. A rider hobbled his rowan horse by crossing the fetters, preventing the horse from moving at all. Know thus, the omen is bad. 40. A bold youth strides alone. He grabs a single arrow in his hand and rears back, splitting a stone in half with it. That mighty was he. Know thus, the omen is good. 41. A cow with white spots was on the verge of calving, but in fear she cried out, I will die. At last she gave birth to a bull with white spots. This is a bull to dedicate to heaven, for his arrival averted her death. Know thus, the omen is good. 42. A woman departed, leaving behind her cups and bowls. She stopped in thought, wondering, where am I going without my cups and bowls? She returned to them, finding them safe, and rejoiced in delight. Know thus, the omen is good. 43. Along a river, a falcon hunted birds. Then an eagle appeared to hunt the falcon. Know thus, the omen is bad. 44. I spy a hare, a hawk exclaimed from the sky. Stooping down to catch it, the hawk wore its claws to the bone, tearing the skin from its prey. Yet the hare escaped anyway. Know thus, the omen is bad. 45. I am a deer fawn all alone. How shall I find water and grass? How shall I find anything in the wide world? Know thus, the omen is bad. 46. A camel fell into the sinking marsh, yet did not try to free itself. It only continued grazing. Trapped, the camel could not keep a fox from eating it. Know thus, the omen is bad. 47. A man visited a god's house and requested his divine favor. Blessing him, the god cried, May your pens be full of livestock. May your life be long. Know thus, the omen is good. 48. I am the old road god. I fix your broken carts and mend your torn goods. I have organized the realm. May everything work. Know thus. 49. A tiger hunted in a clearing where it found a spotted wild goat. The goat escaped by climbing to the top of a steep rock. From its safe perch, the goat bleats and dances with joy. Know thus. The omen is good. 50. A rowan horse is driven until it is exhausted, and a bay horse run until it collapses and its saddle blanket is drenched with sweat. Know thus, the omen is very bad. 51. I am a fierce eagle. In the summer my home is a green rock, and in the winter my home is a red rock. Know thus. 52. A man grew downcast and depressed. The sky filled with clouds. 
but the sun broke through the clouds and filled his heart with joy again. Know thus, the omen is good. 53. A gray cloud passed overhead, raining upon the people. A black cloud passed overhead, raining upon the entire land. The crops ripened and grasses sprouted. The rain gave life to animals and men. Know thus, the omen is good. 54. The slave's words are no more than a request to his master. The raven's words are a divine prayer sent skyward. Heaven above heard the raven's prayer. Men below understood it. Know thus, the omen is good. 55. A brave son of man went off to war. On the battlefield, he gained renown and became an authority and envoy. He returns home as a famous warrior on a strong horse, rejoicing at his fortune. Know thus, the omen is extremely good. 56. I am a stallion happy in his pasture. My summer stud is beneath the nut trees, and my winter stud is beneath the trees where birds crowd. I enjoy both places. Know thus, the omen is good. 57. Her favorite lover has died, and her pail has frozen. Oh, why must her favorite die? He was a mighty big chieftain. Why must her pail freeze? It sits in the warm sun. Know thus, the omen begins with a bit of pain, but in the end it is good. 58. A son grew angry at his parents' words and ran away from home, but when his head had cleared, he thought, I should listen to my mother's advice and heed my father's words. Know thus, the omen is good. 59. I will not make one who has reached a certain time of year stink, nor will I make one who has reached a certain time of month go rancid. Know thus, the omen is good. 60. I am a great maral buck deer, and my antlers have nine points. I rear back on my hind legs and bellow to the sky. Heaven hears it, and men do too. They know how mighty am I. Know thus, the omen is good. 61. A crane returned to its resting place, but it did not look before it sat and was caught in a snare. Now it is fixed in place and cannot escape. Know thus, the omen is bad. 62. I am a Yargun deer. I climb a mountain for my summer residence and am glad. Know thus, the omen is good. 63. The Khan brought his army on a hunt. The beaters in the bush scared a roebuck toward the Khan who caught it with his bare hand. All his soldiers rejoiced. Know thus, the omen is good. 64. I am a gray falcon with a white neck. I perch on a high rock so I may see the widest view. I perch in a poplar that is heavy with nuts all summer long. Know thus, the omen is very good. 65. A fat horse's mouth grew hard. Its owner could not cure it. Know thus, the omen is bad. Now, my dear sons, know thus, this book of divination is good. Everyone is master of his own fate. In the year of the tiger, on the fifteenth day of the second month, this young pious disciple of the Te Gun Tan Monastery writes this book for our affectionate big brother, General Itachuk.